Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're putting together a $700 dual CPU gaming PC. This thing is gonna have 16 cores and 32 threads. And for $700, how well will it perform? But well, we're about to find out. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Do you find it hard to stay up to date with what's going on in the world? Well, today's video sponsor, Apex News, has you covered by sorting through the internet to serve you breaking popular and relevant stories all in one place. Apex News is your one-stop shop to know what's trending in multiple categories and make sure you stay up to date with all the latest information without feeling rushed. As very busy people, we never have time to catch up on the latest news, but with their local news feature, they provide an extensive directory of local news sources, which allows us to have a direct line into the community. So don't wait any longer. Download Apex News by clicking the link in the description down below. A special thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. So do we really suggest doing this at home? Not really, this is a dual Xeon CPU combo. And we just got it for a really good price. So we just decided, hey, let's you know throw in a decent graphics card, some dual coolers on it and see how it performs. I've been always wanting to do a dual Xeon PC build and a fellow YouTuber Craft Computing was nice enough to sell this at a pretty good price. So shout out to him, sent it over so I didn't have to wait months for AliExpress shipping in the hopes that it probably wouldn't show up working. So yeah, let's just go and talk about each individual part and how it makes up this PC build. All right guys, so for the actual motherboard CPU combo, we have this Huanzai X79 combo and look at that. The CPUs are already pre-installed. We have two Xeon E5 2690s, which are eight core, 16 threads. So that's a lot of cores and a lot of threads when you combine those. And to cool those, we're really hoping that these fit because as you can see, these are very close together. It does use X79 proprietary mounting. We have these ID cooling SC224 XT coolers, just like that. There you go, it's cool. Cool. And then for the RAM, we actually have, I have no clue if it's gonna work, but it's, uh, I think it's SK Hynix. And it is eight gig dims at, I believe 1600 megahertz. It is DDR3. And this actually is ECC RAM. So we were able to get this stuff really cheap because of that. Normally ECC stuff can only be used on boards that can actually take it. And this can take ECC, non-ECC, unbuffered, non-buffered. So hopefully this will work inside of this. And for storage, we have a 512 gig, two and a half inch SSD, lightning fast. You really can't use an NVMe on this board anyways. So this is the next best thing. And hey, it's a heck of a lot better than a hard drive. Now for the graphics card, we have a little bit of a throwback here. This is a PowerColor R9 390, which has eight gigs of VRAM and is known for being an absolute beast of a graphics card. They normally run pretty hot, but we got a really good deal on this one. And in proper cooling scenarios, it'll work perfectly fine. It performed pretty well. And we're really excited to see how it performs with these uh, dual Xeons. And for the power supply, we have a good old Intermax Marble Brawn 750 watt power supply. That R9390 pulls a lot of power and any sort of older architecture like Xeon setup, especially dual CPUs is gonna pull a decent amount of power. So 750 watts is more than enough headroom to cover this PC build as is and maybe a few upgrades here and there. And last but certainly not least, we have the Air 900 from our good old friends at Montech. Now this does come with just a basic fan up front and a fan in the back. There is an RGB strip right here, so you get a little RGB up front. But what we're gonna be doing is just slapping in some 120 mil fans up front. So we get three intake fans, just basic NZXT black fans I just smacked myself with. Um, and yeah, it should be plenty of uh, clearance. And the one big thing to mention is this is an EATX motherboard. As you can tell, it is extra wide. So you need an EATX supported case. And this says it supports EATX. Will it actually work? We're about to find out. A lot of this is just a gamble. Not really gonna promise anything. We might change our parts here and there, but as of right now, this is what we're running with. Let's do it.
All right, guys, now that we have this dual Xeon PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now, we side test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Apex Legends, Borderlands 3, Splitgate, Forza Horizon 4, and of course, a Cinebench R20 run because 16 cores and 32 threads, we gotta test Cinebench. First up in Apex Legends on medium settings at 1080p, we average 60 FPS and started to see that the R9 390 is actually the bottleneck in certain situations. The R9 390 was pinged at 100 percent which yeah the r9 390 is an older gpu and it doesn't even have newer support for newer amd drivers so um after this driver release that i think was in like july or june last time i looked you're not getting any more support on an r9 card which doesn't mean that the card's like not usable it just means any newer titles or any new updates that come to newer titles uh this graphics card probably isn't going to be super optimized for it, so the performance might just keep getting worse so something to keep in mind unless you can snag an r9 series card at a really really good price probably not worth picking up but getting 60 fps on apex legends shows that you can play most newer titles still at 60 fps at 1080p at medium high settings so again given the price performance or whatever price you actually pay for this card it could be a good pickup in this market now we decided to test borderlands 3 which is our AAA benchmark of choice on high settings just to max out the r9 390 and with how demanding borderlands 3 is we only average 39 fps i would imagine running medium low we would get the 60 fps average but again the the R9 390 is the bottleneck here. I was expecting those dual Xeons to cause some problems, and you will see in the next game we start to see where they cause some problems because, well, the lower clock speed and the fact that they are dual CPUs can cause some latency issues. Um, but in terms of the high end AAA titles or games that are more GPU dependent, the R9 390 is definitely the bottleneck. Now, next up is Splitgate, which is our esports title of choice. At max settings at 1080p, we averaged 144 plus FPS. The GPU was hitting 100% at times, but it would dip down every so often, about 50 to 40, which is normally a sign of a potential CPU bottleneck. And the problem that lies with these dual CPU setups, where there is built in latency causing some issues in certain games. It doesn't mean that games are unplayable, but with these dual CPUs, there is some stutter that does happen in esports titles when that FPS number gets really really high it's the same thing that happens with older cpus at older clock speeds you're going to get bottlenecked by that cpu and that's where these xeons do have some problems the clock speeds aren't super low 3.3 gigahertz is far better than some other xeons that just lock at like 2 gigahertz and you could do some turbo mod overclocking if you get the right motherboard i dove into the bios for a little bit to see if i can make this board work and well i couldn't really figure it out this is beyond my expertise so i didn't want to do too much to it but if you're somebody who likes to tinker with the hardware you could get a motherboard that actually allows you to do some overclocking and get even better results and the last game we decided to test was forza horizon 4 on high settings at 1080p we averaged 82 fps forza horizon 4 is a pretty optimized game for amd gpus and we've noticed uh you really can get some good results when running even older hardware so getting 82 fps is a pretty good result and last of course we had to run cinebench r20 which we actually got a score of 4684 when comparing it to other CPUs on the market, you could buy like a first gen Threadripper, the 1950X, which is a 16 core 32 thread processor, um, get an older motherboard or something like that and have better performance. But do keep in mind, we only paid under $200 for the dual CPUs and the motherboard. And altogether, this whole system was 700 bucks. That'd be I'd be willing to bet if you're going for a 1950X, you're gonna be spending at least three to $400 on the motherboard alone. So in terms of price performance, I really do like what we have here, but keep in mind, we got a really, really good deal from Craft Computing just so we could do the prospects of this video. I really wouldn't recommend you go on AliExpress and pick this thing up for three to $400 unless you have a high core count use case that is not gaming. These are not designed for gaming. We just thought it'd be cool to make a gaming PC and just see how it performs. Um, but yeah, if you guys wanna pick up any of the stuff for today's video, we'll link in the description down below the affiliate links and they will help us out how we're we gonna bring jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick all right guys so overall this pc performed absolutely amazing in games and to throw out a quick disclaimer because as you may have noticed there's no longer cable extensions well in a very rare case the cable extensions 
We don't know what was going on. We think one of the extensions was probably swapped where it shouldn't be. So the PC was shorting out. And long story short, we ended up throwing in a nice thousand watt thermal tech power supply thinking that was the problem. It was still doing it. We took out the extensions, it worked fine. So ended up being the extensions. We had already done so much work taking the motherboard and everything else in and out multiple times. That we were like, let's just leave this nice thousand watt thermal tech power supply in. So shout out to thermal take. I know you all probably wanted a dedicated video, but you know what? This power supply is awesome and y'all should buy it down below for your next PC build. I mean, a thousand watts is overkill for this PC, but you know what? Might as well because thermal take is awesome. But overall, again, this PC is pretty cool for the money. If you guys want to pick up any of the stuff from today's video, links in the description down below will be affiliate links and they will help us out. And uh, yeah, fun build. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toaster Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye! And hey, if you want to buy a super unique and custom PC like this at a very good price, PCBros.tech is our PC selling business. We sell PCs we make videos on and also some special ones that are exclusive to just PC Bros. So go to the website. See you guys later. Goodbye.